Hello, my name is Mark Piller, and today I want to give you a demonstration of cross-platform remote shared objects. Before we begin, I want to give you a quick overview of what remote shared objects are, in case if you're not familiar with this feature. So first of all, uh, when you use a remote shared object, you have to have an RTMP container. In my uh, examples, I'm going to be using WebWorp uh, 4.NET. However, WebWorp for Java provides exactly the same capability. And our TMP container is the one that actually contains a remote shared object. And as you can see on the screen, this remote shared object uh, has a name A. So any remote shared object would have a logical name that would be known to the clients, and that's how they connect to that remote shared object. A remote shared object, uh, the best way to think about it is, uh, is a dictionary. It's a collection of key and value pairs. And the actual value could be really anything, a primitive value, a string, date, complex type, array, list, whatever you want. Uh, and uh, with WebWorp, we provide support for a variety of different clients, uh, including Flex, Flash, Air, iOS, Windows Phone, Java, and Android clients. And typically, clients would connect to a remote shared object by specifying the name and uh, the address of the RTMP container. And uh, once they are connected, a copy of that remote shared object or a proxy if you want to think about it that way is created in the actual client environment and contains all the same values and all the same data that remote shared object has. So once the connection is established uh, any client can modify the state of that remote shared object and in this case we can see that the flex and flash client updates that remote shared object and sets the uh, value for the key foo to be the value bar. And uh, after that, the remote shared object is updated on the server. And then the server updates all the connected clients with exactly the same data. So this way, it's very easy to exchange information between different clients so they can constantly have exactly the same copy of the data. And all of these, all of these updates take place in real time. So that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a very easy to understand feature, but it's a very powerful one as well. And then in my demonstration today, I'm going to show you a cross-platform connectivity between different types of clients uh, talking to a remote shared object and exchanging data. Okay, so I'm going to switch from this to uh, WebWorp 4.NET Management Console and give you an overview of how that works. So here I have my virtual machine, uh, and you can see uh, WebWorp 4.NET Management Console. And uh, there is actually an example that I'm going to be using, which is a part of this console, but I'm going to expand it out to, to demonstrate mobile clients as well. And the actual example is located under Help Resources tab, and you go into Examples, Expand Flex, Real-Time Messaging, and then scroll to Remote Shared Object Pool Control. And out of the box, this example just shows two different Flex clients, and uh, here we can drag this sphere around in any of these clients and you can see that the data is automatically replicated and the way this works is as I drag this image around the client itself updates the server and specifies the coordinates of that of that image in the remote shared object thus any other client would receive those coordinates and can update it on the screen so you can here I can launch an additional browser window and as you can see it becomes yet another client and you can see these coordinates are Swing, swinging by in the in the log window. Okay. Now, while the remote shared object is running, the same management console can also give you uh, information about what's inside of that remote shared object and how many different remote shared objects there are. So here, I'm using this shared object app as a point of connectivity. Uh, there are two con two connections right now. So if I switch to shared objects, you can see that this is the internal state of that remote shared object. So as you can see, if I bring this client up and uh, move this image around, these coordinates are going to be changing. Okay, so this is like the last known state of that remote shared object. So now uh, to truly demonstrate this functionality in a cross-platform manner, I'm going to bring in some additional uh, client applications, specifically uh, one built for iOS, and uh, later on I'm going to bring in a Windows Phone application as well. So for this, I'm going to switch to an external camera that shows all the devices in place, and, uh, and we're going to go from there. So in my, in my demonstration, I'm going to be using my iPad. 
and uh, there is an application that has been deployed that does exactly the same thing as the application running in the browser and also my iPhone so let me run those apps and here I can specify the IP address of my server which is running right there uh, webwork4.net I'm going to quickly connect to that app here is my remote shared object visualized on the iPad screen and uh, similarly a remote shared object uh, on the iPhone. And also going to launch this application uh, in, uh, in Xcode using uh, a simulator. All right, so here's the simulator with this app running. And uh, to visualize in a better way, I'm going to go back to this example and uh, bring up some additional clients. So there are more of them, and so you can see the action better. And uh, as you can see, that I'm, as I'm dragging this, I'll let me just connect the emulator as well. So as I drag this sphere right here on the iPad screen or the emulator, all the other ones were in the, in the browser. All the other objects automatically get synchronized. And uh, this is a pretty cool effect because it feels like you're just controlling something in the browser directly from your iPhone or, or iPad or directly in the browser. And the cool thing about it is right here we have a bunch of Flex applications and uh, uh, they are talking to a native app running on the iPad or iPhone. And for this, uh, for the iOS connectivity, we use the iOS communication library that Midnight Coders built. And uh, that's, that's how the remote object, remote shared object connectivity comes into play. Okay. Uh, and uh, on top of this, I also have an application uh, running in Visual Studio right here and I do have uh, a Windows phone which is an HTC uh, HD7 phone and uh, this application does exactly the same thing but natively in C Sharp so I'm just gonna launch this application on my uh, Windows phone So here it provides the URL of where WebWorp is running. We can test connection. It says the URL is valid. Accept. And uh, I have exactly the same sphere running on my Windows phone that now is talking to all those remote shared objects running elsewhere. So as you can see, we have three different environments. Uh, Silverlight on Windows phone, native uh, iOS, Objective-C, and uh, Flex application, which could easily be an Air application. So this is a this is a very simple feature, but yet very powerful one, which demonstrates uh, this particular connectivity in action. So hopefully, and all all of it that I have demonstrated is available for download. If you are using WebWorp, the Community Edition is free, and uh, it's restricted to one server. But for larger deployments, there is a commercial license available.